Hey, everybody. Welcome to the show. Coming up this week, Disney reports record profits for its last fiscal year, thanks mainly to the theme parks. Marvel really wants to know who leaked the trailer for the upcoming Avengers movie. And we're going to talk a little bit about throwaway hotel rooms and why he has some people very upset. A little later on, we have our show recorded at the Delaware Disney Meet. The team discussed what it is that keeps you coming back to Disney. All that coming up next. From the Bob Barley Studio in Orlando, Florida, this is the Diz Unplugged. This is the Diz Unplugged, episode 753, for the week of November 11th, 2014. The Diz Unplugged is brought to you by Dreams Unlimited Travel, experts at helping you plan the perfect Disney vacation. Visit them on the web at www.dreamsunlimitedtravel.com. And did I get the episode number wrong? Uh, yeah, the episode number was just a little wrong. I 754. Thought, oh, 754. I I'm only, that's what Dustin wrote. Okay. Well... Hello, everyone. Welcome to the show. <laughs> we don't know you. what number it is. We don't know what's going on. I think Dustin just live. got thrown under the bus. Coming to you live from the Bob Varley Studio in Orlando, Florida. I'm your host, Pete Werner, joined at the table this week by my good friends, John Magi, Kevin Close, Jenny Lynn Knopp, Kathy Whirling, and back in the production nook, associate producer Craig Williams, standing in for Dustin, who came back from Delaware with the plague, apparently. <laughs> It was my fault. I, Is it uh, Ebola? I, I poisoned his cereal. Oh, okay. <laughs> so it's very it's a it's a Hamlet thing going on. It's uh, a very Shakespearean. I just want, really wanted to be alone back here today. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, Dustin's already. Dustin's got a vicious head cold right now. So he's in the chat room. Everybody wish him uh, well that he gets uh, better. What? The chat room thinks I look skinny. <laughs> that is never a word that's used to describe it. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> You've been you. losing. You've been losing like crazy. Thank you. So, also want to just uh, make mention of the fact that today uh, is Veterans Day. So, we want to send out our best wishes and our gratitude to everyone who has served uh, in the armed forces, who is currently serving in the armed forces, and especially their families. Um, I think a lot of times that gets overlooked, the families mm-hmm. of the service uh, servicemen and women um, who don't care about the politics. They go and do what they are asked to do for their country, and for that, we owe them everything. There's not enough we can ever do for people uh, in the armed services. I've always said that. And uh, so this is a day to remember those folks. And uh, you see a veteran, you see anyone in the services, walking around, thank them for their service. Um, try and go out of your way to do that, anywhere you are. It does not, not just today. Um, anytime, especially when I'm in Atlanta, uh, Atlanta yes. airport, mm-hmm. uh, that seems to be a big hub for servicemen and women. Um, always see them going through, always see them in uniform, and I go out of my way to go up to them. Uh, last time I was in Atlanta, bought a round of drinks uh, for a bunch of them sitting in a, sitting in a bar. Um, do something nice for them. Do something nice. Just anything. Just thank them. So, um, also uh, in housekeeping, want to mention our Disneyland show every Thursday, disunplugged.com. On this week's edition, we have the second part of Michael Bowling's chat with Disneyland historian Don Ballard and Tom Bell's review of two brand new Anaheim hotels, the Hyatt Place and Spring Hill Suites. So, you can check them out, disunplugged.com, this Thursday, or subscribe to them on iTunes. Just do a search for. Diz Unplugged, you'll see the Disneyland edition, and you can subscribe to their to, uh, their uh, their feed and get their shows downloaded automatically each week. Um, also want to thank the folks from Delaware for another great meet. They raised $6,000. Mm-hmm. Tremendous. Which yeah. is Tremendous. fantastic. Congratulations. I know they were a little nervous there. It was looking like, uh, you know, they might not get the signups they were hoping for, but they pulled it out. Uh, we did. We had a good crowd. Mm-hmm. And I know their goal was five thousand dollars because that's what it uh, that's what the cost is to sponsor one child, and so it's really encouraging to see that uh, we were able to exceed that. That's awesome. So, it, yeah. was. it was. It was great. great. Yeah. It was a great time. So special uh, special kudos to James and Denise Kays who uh, are the organizers of that meet. You guys did a great job. So thank you for that. And I spent way too much money on uh, these ornaments that the New Jersey girls are making. Yeah. They're phenomenal. Really? Oh, my gosh. I have never spent so much money on Christmas ornaments in my life. (laughs) 
Yeah. Well, good. It's great. I heard they had a lot of great stuff. They um, they really did. For for auction. They had a tremendous selection for the auction <clears throat> to the point I was really taken aback by it. They they did that last year too. It was really impressive the yeah. uh, uh, the selection. So congratulations to the folks in Delaware, everyone who helped out, and especially James and Denise for doing such a a great job two years in a row now. So. Um, also want to just plug a couple of uh, recent articles that have gone up on the Diz. As I mentioned last week, we've been putting up lots of lots of new articles, um, and uh, we have a review now of uh, Universal's Portofino Bay Resort that just went up yesterday. Um, Dustin's uh, Dustin's article: Four Reasons uh, Why Disney's Hollywood Studios Needs to and Will Change just took off. I mean, that just blew up. So um, all these are, are available on the DIS homepage, www.info.com. And uh, we are now ready to start accepting submissions from folks who would like to submit articles to the DIS. As I had mentioned before, we're going to pay $50 uh, if we use your article. And a link to sign up to be part of that program will be on the show notes page later on tonight, disunplugged.com. And uh, we'll also be posting it on Facebook. And... Uh, People can start submitting articles. So if you want to earn some extra money, $50 a clip if we use your article. And uh, you have to have a PayPal account, though, because that's the only way I'm doing it. I'm not going to sit and write checks. <laughs> just going to do it through PayPal. It's much easier. So um, also, we have some videos that just went up uh, this week. We have our video of Portofino Bay, which uh, just went up th- uh, yesterday. Um, the Frozen Holiday Wish uh, Castle Lighting Ceremony that Craig filmed last week, um, unbelievable. Oh. I really just, that just got me. Thank you. That just got me. That You did a great job with that video. And you know what? They did a great job with the show. I don't usually like it when they touch the castle. I'm okay with the Christmas lights. I just, you know, there are people that are mm-hmm. like up in arms because like Cinderella didn't come out and give her permission. Just stop it. Well, you know. <laughs> just stop it. She didn't give her permission. Well, I do think they should have Maybe include. Oh no, you're not one of them, are you? No, no. I mean, I thought it was beautiful the way it was, but it just does seem like the Disney didn't go for that extra touch of adding. And Cinderella. Disney's all about the storytelling that yeah. really should have been part of the story. I don't think so. I think the two stories have nothing to do with each other. I mean, I, honestly, you know, Frozen and you know, Cinderella doesn't belong in Frozen. We need to just have. Do you want someone to come and decorate your? Well, I do actually. Absolutely. <laughs> 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 so I uh, I I in. I enjoyed all the new effects that they used with the projection technology like they used in Celebrate the Magic. Uh, I thought that was wonderful. However, the two things that really just ruined the entire thing for me is the the weird dance moves that Elsa was doing the entire time while she was like throwing the ice crystals on the castle. It's not featured a lot in the video because I used a wide shot of the castle, but she's doing this weird like it's like jazzercising <laughs> dance around Craig the castle. Craig doesn't like her interpretive dancing. Oh, it, it was awful. <laughs> and then oh, the man. six foot Olaf. Grinch. Six foot Olaf. So who's Grinch. taller than the other characters. <laughs> I thought it was beautiful. And apparently a lot of people liked it because there's been a ton of views on that video and a ton of likes. I thought it was great. So, And I was there Friday night uh, for the party and... Uh, how was that? You know what? Let me tell you something. It's always, it's always a, a little crazy at the beginning of the party because you have the day guests leaving mm-hmm. and the party guests coming in. So Main Street is just a nightmare. Um, but I'm telling you something. I'm again. It's anecdotal. I don't have any proof of this. They're selling less tickets. They are selling less tickets because once everything had filtered out, everybody had filtered out. The park was pretty much empty. Well, we see that with the fact that Kathy sends out emails all the time to us that certain events have sold out. Dates are selling out earlier mm-hmm. than they ever last used to. Last night was sold out, too. When, when was the last time, honestly, that they sold out opening night of the Christmas party? Right, no. It doesn't Never. happen. I don't remember it happening. Um, I think all of the complaints that they have been getting about the parties being too crowded, too expensive, not getting your money's worth... All this stuff, and also that you notice, there's no, you know, hundred dollar add-on ticket for this with a special. Yeah, Smart, right? I think there's. I well, think that's another reason. I yeah. also think what they're doing is they're making. I think someone's decided to make the party of better value, with 
the hassle about fast pass plus and extra long standby lines this is a, now the party becomes valuable if there's less people there and you don't have to wait mm-hmm. for anything it was well, that's it, the truth it was a wonderful night i thought the add-on of uh, the frozen characters at the beginning of the christmas parade was really well done we have that video up as well uh and uh, so you can go out to youtube um to our, our youtube channel and check out all those videos well i'm just getting plugs in left and right here yeah. uh I, I really thought they did they did an excellent job, and I'm really glad it seems that they have dialed back on the just pack as many people in there and don't care about the experience Good. management style that seems to have pervaded in years past. I think maybe they've finally gotten the message. Pull back on this stuff. Even if you're going to charge more for the ticket, pull back on this stuff so that the experience is a good one. I mean, pretty much everything that I looked at anyway was either a <coughs> five to ten minute wait or just a walk on. Mm. Um, so you have five hours of being able to yeah, kind of hit everything. That's perfect. And then, of course, the park just has that 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 glow to it for mm-hmm. the party, for the Christmas party. The Christmas parade was fantastic, of course. Holiday wishes. It's the same show they do every year, every year, but that's okay because it's a pretty much perfect fireworks yes. show. Um, so, honestly, I can say that the Christmas party this year probably the best value. I've always liked it. I've always enjoyed it. I think this year it's the best value it's been in a long time. So if they are practicing this where they're dialing back, and again, I don't have proof of that. This is just my feeling being in the, in the park. Um, I think they've gotten the message. I don't so. want to get off track, but what did you think of the uh, the new decorations on Main Street since they couldn't hang the... I thought it looked beautiful. Yeah. I actually prefer it so do, during over the, daytime the stuff I do. Hanging, yeah. hanging over the street. I, I actually thought it was more tasteful. Oh. So, yeah, for those who don't know what we're talking about, where where they used to string decorations across Main Street from building to building across garland. the street the garland they can't do it anymore because of the parade and so they have these I don't know what what are they called they're like I don't know they're like old fashioned just looking uh, like metal arms exactly yeah. but really like stylized they're not like just like the hunk of metal um, but these really nice stylized metal arms coming out of the buildings and that's where the wreaths yeah. are hung from and the, the decorations are so I thought it looked really tasteful I thought the Magic Kingdom looked great uh, cast members seem to be in a great mood. Um, they always are for the parties. They really seem to enjoy the parties. Uh, too bad it can't be a party all the time then because mm. the rest of the time they're pretty miserable. But uh, no, I thought the Christmas party was great. So We could uh, plug my blog because I have pictures of the the <laughs> arms with the wreaths. So if you need pictures. And what's the name of your blog? Arms with wreaths. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was a holiday wish, but it's on the website. It's, it's under design, the blog. Uh, uh, blog.wdwinfo.com. Yeah. All right, enough plugs, enough plugs. Um, anybody else have anything for housekeeping? Yeah, I've got a plug. Um, for uh, those of you who haven't seen it uh, yet or just really haven't been looking around or noticed it, uh, we do have a, a new website for Universal. Uh, it's just universal.wdwinfo.com. Uh, it's, it's got a different look to it than the the rest of the website because it's uh, something different we've been trying. So any feedback that we can get on that would be uh, helpful because we're trying to just up the universal game, do a little little stuff different, see uh, see what kind of reaction it gets. Uh, going along with that too, um, everyone's been asking, uh, and the the universal edition of the Diz Unplugged will be coming back in January. Uh, Dustin, Pete, and I are working through everything, trying to figure out the the best fit for how the show should be uh, moving forward. So uh, after Christmas break, whenever we all get back to this thing, then uh, we'll be back with that one too. And um, uh, just keep an eye out for the content going up. We got a lot of stuff. Also, uh, we'll be linking to that through the Facebook page, which is facebook.com slash the Diz Universal, because Diz Universal is owned by some uh, Mexican towel company, I believe. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> then we also have our own Twitter page, uh, twitter.com slash Diz Universal. So at Diz Universal, look for us on all those. Uh, we'll be updating it a lot. So just uh, if you like it, let awesome. us know. Put a ring on it. Yeah. Put a ring on it. Oh, right. <laughs> like. Okay, Beyonce, you have anything? I don't. <laughs> Anybody else? Any housekeeping? No? All right, I want to get to the poll results from last week, and I completely forgot to announce what the poll was on last week's show um, because I'm getting lax with my script, um, so that was my fault. But we put a poll up asking about this issue of throwaway rooms. We're going to talk about it a little bit later in the show for those who are not familiar with the issue. (laughs) But 
Um, basically, a throwaway room is a room that uh, you book for one night just to get the perks associated with it. And a lot of people are doing this at Fort Wilderness, actually, in the campsites. Um, I go into a lot more detail later on with this. We also have an, I have an article going up tomorrow about it. But we asked people um, what they thought about this issue of throwaway rooms. Um, 56, almost 57 percent of the people said people are paying for a room and are entitled to whatever Disney gives them. Uh, 26 percent said this is taking away a room away from someone who wants to use it. And 18 percent said this is cheating and should not be allowed. Now, after we talk about this and after my article goes up tomorrow, I wonder if that's going to change. And we'll have another poll hmm. at the end. We'll have another poll next week. Same issue, similar issue. And I want to see what people think. But we're going to talk about that a little later on, about this issue of throwaway rooms, because it has some people really, really, really upset. And I think when we kind of get into the details of what's going on with this, people will understand more why uh, so many people are starting to get upset, especially people who like to camp at Fort Wilderness. But we will get to that a little later on. But those are the results of last week's poll. And you know what I forgot to do is I forgot to poll a winner. So let me do that while John starts the news, and then we'll right. announce a winner. Very good. Uh, our first news story, the Walt Disney Company has strong year with record help from theme parks. Last week, the Walt Disney Company reported earnings for its fourth quarter and fiscal year, ending September 27, 2014. Overall revenues for the year increased 8% to a record $48.8 billion dollars. Net income for the year increased 22% to a record $7.5 billion. $50 billion that company took. Wow. That's unbelievable, isn't it? <laughs> but net increase of 22%. Yeah. That's unbelievable. Uh, if the cast members are raised. Yeah. yeah. And Ooh. clean costumes. Some of them did. Uh, <laughs> Robert Iger, chairman and chief executive officer of the Walt Disney Company, was quoted as saying, quote, our results for fiscal 2014 were the highest in the company's history, marking our fourth consecutive year of record performance. We're obviously very pleased with this achievement and believe it reflects the extraordinary quality of our content and our unique ability to leverage success across the company to create significant value, as well as our focus on embracing and adapting to emerging consumer trends and technology. Studio entertainment revenues for the quarter increased 18% to $1.8 billion, driven by increase in worldwide theatrical and home <coughs> entertainment distribution. Higher worldwide theatrical distribution results were due to the success of Guardians of the Galaxy and Maleficent in the current quarter, compared to Monsters University and The Lone Ranger in the prior year quarter. Well, you know, Lone Ranger. The increase in worldwide home entertainment was due in large part to the success of Frozen. Of course. Uh, of course. Other significant titles included Captain America 2, The Winter Soldier. Consumer products revenue for the quarter increased 7% to $1.1 billion, driven it for the most part by merchandise from Frozen and Spider-Man. The company's theme park business finished its fiscal year with a strong fourth quarter performance, up 7% from the same period last year, reaching $3.96 billion in revenue. Most notably, Walt Disney World reported record attendance for the quarter. Well, also, let's, uh, for the fourth quarter, and let's just remind everybody that Disney's fiscal year goes from October 1st to September 30th. So they're talking about, when they talk about their fourth quarter, they're talking about uh, July, August, and September. Correct. Um, and record attendance, and I think any of us that were in the parks yes. <laughs> uh, during that time would agree mm -hmm. uh, that attendance is certainly not an issue right now. Overall, Disney theme parks raked in nearly $15.1 <clears throat> billion dollars in revenue in the full year, which is a 7% climb from $14 billion the previous year. Um, and the only downside, really, of the report seems to be that uh, operating income at cable networks decreased $10 million to $1.3 billion for the quarter. Lower operating income was driven by a decrease at ESPN and the international Disney channels. Mm. Um, interactive revenues for the quarter also decreased by $34 million to $362 million. Every year, ESPN goes down. What's going on with that? I don't know. I don't know why they can't. I mean, you think that sports is 
the top when yeah. you look at what the shows are in a weekly review sports are always the top ranked mm-hmm. shows that are being watched i don't know why they can't monetize that well i mean they have monetized they've done incredibly well over the why years can't, in general why are they so losing why is it, space? yeah why are they losing uh uh why are they losing their their place things there. why are yeah. things happening why to are them things happening to them <laughs> there are bad things happening <laughs> to my sentences i don't know <laughs> well, i guess i also guess too what happens is there's a you know an equalizing effect if one area of the business is doing so well it's okay if another area loses a little right, bit right right and what was it 10 million on 1.3 billion is not yeah it's not exactly you know they're significant for the company they're going to be on a breadline anytime soon <laughs> um yeah i mean the company had a great year no question had a great year but you know, we have to ask at what cost. Now, we talk about record attendance at the theme parks. Um, Aaron Del Prince wrote a fantastic article for our blog uh, last week, which did really well about the need for more attractions. Mm-hmm. And the way you know the way people responded to that blog really tells me that you know because his his point is. You want to make these lines a little bit more manageable, add a lot more attractions. Mm -hmm. You got all this unused space that you're not doing anything with. Um, And this is, and also when we talk about throwaway rooms, this actually plays into that uh, to some degree. Some of the issues that people are having with FastPass Plus. Um, Some of the loopholes that people have found with this throwaway room thing. Um, And so you're having this experience where people are saying, too crowded, lines too long. Um, at what point does this boomerang back on the company? At what right. point? Because I'll tell you when it's going to change. When we don't have this particular news story. Right. That they had a 7% increase in $15 billion in revenue. When that number starts going south and they start tying it to that issue, guess what? That's when it's going to change. But as long as this number keeps going up. There's no need to change it. There really hasn't been, generally speaking, I'm not seeing a real big focus on the guest experience. It's about how many people can we shoehorn right, into right. these parks and I how much can we that. charge them to do it. I think I've really thought about this and I always take the opposite approach. I've told you before, I'm not a huge fan of fast pass. I think that's my biggest concern that in my opinion, it was always you went when you went to Disney, there was no such thing as a bad experience. If there was a bad experience, they fixed it. Well, do you remember how especially in the 90s there was so much company propaganda around service um, about the stellar service about the Disney difference and about you don't hear that anymore no you don't you don't hear it anymore you don't hear Disney propagandizing their service do you remember anymore. when they did the Disney Institute they had training courses for other companies to come and take the Disney service training they still do, they still do. Say, they they still still do it do it's just it's not they don't they don't Every time I remember in the '90s, every time you turned around, Disney was spinning that Disney difference, that mm-hmm. service, and they don't do it anymore. And I think that's really, really telling. Because let's be honest, especially for those of us that were around in the '80s and the '90s and are around now, it's the same service we get anyplace else. It really is. It's not exceptional anymore. There are exceptional cast members, to be sure. And there are cast members that go above and beyond. I'm not saying that. But when you have flooded your workforce with temporary employment, nobody is invested in what they are doing. We were at Universal last week, and I hate to keep bringing this up, but we were walking around. We had a couple of bags. We were walking around. And my nephew stopped to play one of the carnival games outside of uh, the Simpsons ride. And the cast member working, or excuse me, the team member working there asked him if he was aware that they had package pickup at the front of the park and would he like her. She's not working a retail location, mind you. Would he like for her to take that and put it up at the front of the park so he didn't have to carry it around? Wow. I'm looking at that saying, that is what I used to expect at Disney. Wouldn't see it now. Would not see that now. And we saw it all over the place at Universal, in the parks, in the resorts, and in City Walk. I saw it all over the place. And so I don't want to go off on a rant, but it is something that I'm noticing. It is something that I'm noticing. I do notice that during the uh, the parties, cast members seem really, really energized. Mm -hmm. And I don't see that same energy. It's a stress level. 
It's it is. And, when you and, have less things to do at one time, you can focus on an individual. Well, it's also, you know, how much of yourself are you really going to invest in a job that you're pretty much going to have for the summer or for six months? Yeah. And when... Uh, uh, I would so, think that also that the crowd levels play into that. As you're saying, there's not as big of a crowd level during the parties, but you go during the day and it's still really busy. I mean, I remember going to Disney World when I was little and you would never see the cast members act the way that they are now but now they'll like scream at you to get to one side of the you know yeah. sidewalk that would have never have happened when i was 10 no, or it, 12 and it's a daily thing and it's not that they're being mean it's that they're trying to manage the crowds and it's also there's a huge temperature difference at the parties and i, I know that you know when you're standing out in 95 degree heat and it's now 65 degrees sure it's a little easy to be nicer well but at the end of the day what it comes back to is disney needs more full-time invested cast members yes and much less temporary help i'm not trashing the college program because you know what some great people come out of the college program and disney finds some amazing talent in the college program but it is the exception and people in the college program will admit this i've talked to many of them and they all say the same thing yeah there are those of us that are really into it and love it love disney have always loved disney want to be there, and we're really into it. But the vast majority of the people in the college program, this is just something cool to do for six months. Mm -hmm. And you get to put Disney on your resume. Someone else has pointed out in chat, um, I think we're also seeing a lot more people being rude to cast members. Yes. I think there's a lot, in my opinion, there's a great deal of entitlement. Mm. In, no question. Uh, well, that's a function of crowds, too. Right. It's also yeah. a function of price. I'm paying. Yeah. I'm having to take a second mortgage on my house to do this vacation. When you're when you're trying right. to get everything and you can't accomplish everything and it's too crowded and you can't walk, I think people get frustrated and they lash out to where. Uh, I'm just saying. I don't. I, it's not. It's right. not just a cut and dried situation. Well, no, absolutely. And I think especially if we're going to talk about the '80s and the '90s, this was pre-internet and pre-social media and right. pre. I have to have everything right now. Mm -hmm. uh, we have become a nation of instant gratification seekers. Yeah. And we're not about waiting, and we're not about being inconvenienced. And look, I can be as guilty as the next person on that. So I'm not casting dispersions on everybody and saying I'm not like that. I am like that. Uh, I have to catch myself, though. I have to catch myself and check myself and. Sometimes I'm more successful at that than others. But, yeah, there is a sense of entitlement in general right now that everybody's entitled to whatever they want whenever they want it. Um, and so certainly that has played a role. But I think that Disney can mitigate some of this by relying less on college program and investing more in full-time cast members. Um, there are 70,000 people out of work right now in Central Florida who would love a full-time job. And a full-time job, even on the front lines at Disney, is sure as hell better than working full-time at 7-Eleven. And there's a, there are people out there, and there, are, there is talent out there. And, you know, Disney, one thing Disney is really good at is promoting from within. And, you know, how many people, I mean, I'm pretty sure George Caligridis, who's president of Walt Disney World right now, started out on Main Street. Mm -hmm. um, and there, that story is not unusual in Disney. Not at all. And I, so I, I don't know. I, I don't want to spend too much more time on this because we're already at 1.30. But um, I, uh, I, I, I would like to see Disney change some of this stuff. But, you know, I've been complaining about it since I think the very first show we did uh, nine years ago. So, you know, whatever. I'll stop now. All right. Our next news story, Disney Parks and Resorts signs agreement with major generic drug company to enhance access to EpiPens it's in its parks. It's a slow news week. No, oh. I think this is significant, and I get to pick the story, so move. <laughs> <laughs> generic drug, drug giant Milan, Inc. announced a multi-year agreement with Walt Disney Parks and Resorts that includes updated maps in, Disney, in Disney's domestic theme parks as well as updated signs in theme parks and on cruise ships that highlight locations with EpiPens and EpiPen Junior auto injectors. The Pittsburgh-based global pharmaceutical company controls the worldwide market for epinephrine. Uh, the EpiPens are used for the emergency treatment of life-threatening allergic reactions caused by allergens, exercise, or unknown triggers. Uh, the financial terms of the agreement were not disclosed. Well, actually, you know, all kidding aside, with the number, especially the number of children with food allergies right, exactly. right now, 
Um, I think this is a great addition mm-hmm. to the parks. Um, this also reminds so, me of when they did the same thing with the defibrillator, defibrillators. Right. Yes. Now, so, my underst- so is, is my understanding correct? There are emergency locations throughout the park yes. where mm-hmm. they can just go grab one of these pens and give somebody having a reaction an injection. I don't know what the what the procedure is if you have a reaction. If you could just go up and break the glass and take it. I don't know if maybe it's like in a location. Break glass, stab guest? Right. Exactly. <laughs> it might be in that it's a location where it's, you know, someone is present to help you. I don't know exactly. Maybe someone can educate me on that. But I think the fact that they're spending money on this particular issue is important. Yeah. I think I read in one of the things that they're going to have um, on the map, they're going to have it marked so that if you needed it, you'd be able to find it on the park map, too. Like a giant needle? Yeah, yeah, I don't know what the symbol is going to be. The wrong way. Really. <laughs> I thought it was like a like a automated thing. Like if you thought you needed it, you went up and you stuck your hand in the and got stabbed. Desi- uh, no, it's a designated heroin injection site. Oh, is that what it is? Yeah. You go up with your magic band and you scan it, and a needle comes out and shoots you. Is that what you think it's like? No, this actually, uh, it makes me excited because Kylie is right. very, very allergic to uh, shellfish and peanuts, and although. For the most part, we do talk to the chef whenever we go out to eat and stuff. That doesn't mean that everything's always going to be 100% safe, and you never know when anything can come from. Uh, like one time we ate at Tepanado and uh, tried to get a table where no one else was uh, having any uh, shellfish whenever it was being cooked, and you know, but just the fumes in the air alone got to her. And she didn't have an EpiPen or an uh, inhaler with her, so we had to like trudge all the way back to the beach club from oh my gosh. Uh, from Japan just so she could get her inhaler to get started on the process mm. of recovering. And yeah. you know, if if there would have been an EpiPen around, probably would have just took the uh, <laughs> took the chance to go stab her. And uh, <laughs> that's and, one way uh, to put it. Helped it go to, uh, get better a little quicker. So she doesn't normally carry the EpiPen with her? She does if she's going on big trips and stuff, but for the most part, she she doesn't, um, in, unless she takes a purse with her. But if we're just going to the parks for like an hour and walking around, usually you don't expect that anything's going to happen right. like that. So, and Plus, I mean, a lot of... Uh, it's just... It's one of those things that uh, you, you just sometimes walk out of the house without remembering. So... But one less thing I think that people have to worry about yeah. and makes puts them at ease when they visit a Disney yep. theme park. All right. In our third and final news story, Marvel subpoenas Google to release identity of person who leaked Avengers trailer. They are pissed about this. They are pissed. Marvel Studios was planning to release the trailer for its upcoming Avengers Age of Ultron film during ABC's Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. last week. But the video was leaked by an unknown user a week earlier. Right after the leak, Marvel went ahead and released the official trailer, which broke streaming records, reaching 34.3 million global views in wow. less than 24 hours. <sighs> However, Marvel has now had a federal judge subpoena Google for, quote, all identifying information for the user John Gazelle, the Google account that leaked the trailer. Google has until November 18th to produce the information. If I was John Gazelle, I'd be hiding Mm -hmm. because (laughs) they... You'd be looking for Snowden. Yeah. (laughs) You're... You're you're going to experience the full force and weight of Disney legal on this. And um, they are not... They don't play with this. They don't play with this. This is money. This is about money. This is about them controlling... How this stuff gets released, when it gets released, where it gets released, uh, and it's all part of a much larger marketing plan for these films that they spend hundreds of millions of dollars shooting and promoting, and you just, you know, it reminds me of that scene from the movie Network. You have, you have, you have, uh, oh, Lord, I can't remember the line now. Uh, you have interfered with the primal forces of nature, and you must tone. Um, You're smiling. You never saw Network. I never saw Network. You never saw Network? <laughs> never saw okay, Network. if you have not seen the movie Network, you need, not right now, but later, go watch it. Go watch the movie Network. Unbelievable movie. And think about this. It was done in the 1970s, and you realize, it's uh, by Patty Chayefsky, um, you realize how prescient this movie was. <laughs> You've heard the the big line from Network because yeah. I'm mad as hell and I'm not going to take, take it, it anymore. anymore. Right, right. But no, it's a great movie. But 
Um, so what is John Gazelle has has interfered with the primal forces of nature and must atone. All right. So what um, is Google's responsibility in all this? If a federal judge has issued a subpoena, I can just tell you this from our standpoint too, um, because I've had to I've had to say that you know we've had companies, including Disney, come to us and want information. They said, get a subpoena. They never have. Um, but that's the only way I'll release information. If a federal judge says to you, you have to release this information, then you have to release that information. So Google has to take whatever information it has on this user, which we're talking about Google here, so they pretty much know his shoe size. Um, <laughs> That they have to release that if, to Disney, and then Disney can take that information right. and investigate who this person is. There's also the idea that you know what is what is the information that they have is actually true and accurate. You know, it might just be they have his IP address because everything else can be made up. And that fake. that 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 subpoena would transfer to the ISP, who would then have to say would be because the your ISP can tell that IP address was attached to this account at that date and that time. So no, this guy's gonna get caught. This guy, whoever this was, there's unless he leaves the country and shacks up with Snowden over in Russia, um, this guy's gonna get caught and he's gonna go to jail. Um, Disney's not gonna mess around with this. They are not gonna mess around. They will if they're doing this publicly. They're gonna make. They're gonna catch this guy and they're gonna make an example out of him to scare the hell out of anybody else that may think about trying to do this again. And what's the assumption? The assumption is that he's obviously someone who might work for Disney or work in the distribution I don't channel. Know that, I don't know that. I don't know that there's any assumption there. Um, this could be a 14-year-old kid who just happened to hack into the right server and find this. So, But somehow we're, we're assuming that he has access to the content in some illegal way. Oh, no. Well, clearly. Yeah. Clearly. But well, it's, if it turns out he works for Disney mm-hmm. and he did this, yeah, oh, it's then really you're bad. a moron. But it's not like yesterday Target leaked their uh, Black Friday sale. You don't think it's Disney trying to drum up publicity no, for this? No, 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 I don't no, think no, if they no, go okay. as far as mentioning they someone's don't need name. To. Yeah. They don't need well, to. That's when they, true. they release the trailer, it gets 35 million views in 24 that's, hours. They don't need to leak anything to hype it. The fact that the trailer is out there is hype enough. But that's what people have been waiting for, especially yeah. for a movie like this. Yeah, I feel bad for the person, but uh, it also caused Disney to release the trailer earlier, and it is going to be absolutely fantastic. Having the I've Got No Strings uh, remix in the background, it makes it super creepy. It's going to be a great movie. So I don't feel bad sorry for, for this the guy. guy but no, I'm not sorry for him at all. He's an idiot. He's an idiot, and he deserves whatever he gets. You're going to be this stupid? You're going to be this stupid? You're going to take something like that on a movie like this with a company like Disney and think they're not going to come after you? Oh, well, that's true. Speaking but- of released trailers, I'm going to change the subject. They've released like three of them now for Into the Woods. Yeah. John tells me I'm not allowed to watch them anymore. <laughs> he said to me the other day, how many times have you watched that trailer? I said, today? We have to go it together when it's so released. Good. Christmas Day. Oh, is it Christmas Day? Christmas Day. I'll go with I you. can tell you where I'm going to be Christmas night. <laughs> I'm telling you now. No, seriously. I okay, go. let's go. Let's go see that together. I am so excited. Oh, my God. I think I've watched the one, um, <laughs> the one where Meryl Streep sings. I don't know what the title of it is, but I think I've watched it now 20 times. Oh. Can't it's wait. Steven just, Sondheim and Meryl Streep. They the just released the 50 track CD, and you can sample it on playbill.com. So you can hear the CD version of the song. It's going to be a double CD, and there's 50 tracks. A lot of it's instrumental, but. Very excited about it. Very excited. But, you know, it's big shoes to fill for, for Meryl. Um, that's Bernadette Peters' role. Um, yeah, but Meryl Streep can sing really well. Oh no, absolutely. Directed by Rob Marshall, who did Ab- Chicago. Absolutely. So I'm not no, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not worried about it. But you know that, you know that is that that role is pretty much owned by Bernadette Peters, and this is turning into a very gay conversation. Um, <laughs> but I am so excited, I can barely stand it. I know. I'm right there with you. I'm right there with you. So, all right. Well, thank you, John. That'll do it for the news. We're going to move welcome. on to our caption. This from last week. We had a picture of my nephew Carl and Dustin on the Hulk. And uh, we asked you to caption this photo. A number of people make, made comments about my nephew's hair. Um, I have made those comments as well, like, have you given up? Um, <laughs> and uh, do, they not have, do they not have barber shops in New Jersey? Um, but uh, Bob Dentremont, uh, Dustin couldn't keep his feelings inside any longer. He had to let the world know how wonderful he felt using Pantene's new Maximum Hall <laughs> Styling Gel. <laughs> uh, 
Tom Stowe, one of our funnier, uh, one of our funnier uh, uh, fans. Uh, the new safety harness in the production nook didn't look so silly when the subject of parking at Downtown Disney came up. <laughs> <laughs> and Todd Probus, who loves the Hulk coaster, the Property Brothers, that's who. Uh, <laughs> okay, that's funny. <laughs> um, that's so, funny stuff. Uh, this week, uh, for our caption this, uh, we have a picture that Jenny Lynn took at the D- uh, Delaware meet of Dustin. Uh, what is that? Just like a... He has fan. a fan. He has a fan. <laughs> he was he was chilling. Oh, come on. <laughs> Hanging out. Dustin and his fan. <laughs> Game over. I win. <laughs> Game right, I'm like, check. Or PayPal, whatever it is you're paying. <laughs> <laughs> write something. I just did. No, you got to write an article. Oh. I just have to step back a minute. This has caused great conversation. The CD comes out December 15th. The movie comes out Christmas. Of Age of okay. Ultron? The CD? Stop it. The music? <laughs> Is Meryl Streep in that? <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> it's Into the Woods comes out December 15th. The this two CD set. John, this is no laughing matter for Kevin. It is not. No, it's Got not. to be serious here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is, you know, don't make me take off my earrings. Every day we, every day we talk about Louis Vuitton and Into the Woods. There's a, every and? end. Every day we do check. We talk about Louis Vuitton today. <laughs> okay, we're going to do the Woods today. <laughs> it's a long ride home. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> all right, let's move on to rapid fire. We're going to start with you, John. All right, big news. Star Wars Episode Seven. the title's been announced. It's going to be Star Wars The Force Awakens. It just, it sound, I, I, I think this is a terrible title. It is. Yeah, it's a complete snoozer. Harrison I'm very excited about the movie. But this this title just didn't do anything no, for me, and I think a lot weird. of people a lot of people kind of agree. Is with Meryl that. Streep singing in this one? She is not. <laughs> well, why bother? Harrison Ford thought it was the farts awaken. <laughs> the farts awaken. Yeah. I mean, the good news on all this is that uh, Anthony Daniels came out and said that he thinks it has the out of the closet. <laughs> it has the potential to be better than Empire, which is if Whoa. you're actually a Star Wars fan, that's hands down the best one. Yeah, so yeah. agreed. If the actor who's been in every single Star Wars movie says it's going to be the best one they can name it uh, the, the old men retire or whatever i i don't care it's star wars it's gonna assisted be living <laughs> <laughs> no seriously that's a really bold statement yeah it is, it is. It's, it's big words well it's coming from anthony daniels so i don't know we met him once i wasn't he's not impressed. the night he's not the nicest man no he's mm-hmm. not I'm like dude you played a robot in a movie he's Get very over impressed yourself. with himself of everybody <laughs> we've ever met, he is at the bottom. Yep, I of agree. The list. I agree. And if you go on the internet, uh, go on Google and search for him. We're not the only ones that oh, say okay. that. Okay, good. Um, anybody, anytime he shows up at a convention or anything like that, he is repeatedly pissing people off. So someone in chat says they should call it Star Wars. Jar Jar is not in this one. <laughs> yeah, thank God. That wouldn't make it the best one. <laughs> Uh, just in case people don't know, it's going to be released December 18th, 2015. Yep. That's someplace so, else I will be on December 18th, 2015. There are people in line as we speak. Yep. Oh. Geeks are in line now. I'm paying someone to hold my space. So. <laughs> All right. Thank you, John. Kevin. ABD has two new itineraries being released. There is a Spain itinerary and an itinerary that just does Tuscany, the tastes and sights and sounds of Tuscany. I'm interested. We don't have a lot of information. There's new information coming out December 9th. These will not be the usual ABD releases that they usually release in 2000 or in May of the year before. We'll be get 2000. All right, I'm going to start over. ABD usually releases new dates in May of the previous year, so we will get 2016 dates in May of 2015. These are special releases. But normally they also announce their new itineraries in May, and I've noticed that they've been kind of dripping out new ones. We had the, like the long Nashville weekends, long yeah. weekend and uh, New York this. long weekend in San right. Francisco. Uh, they do. They tell me that they will be released earlier, but there is no information. There's no pricing or itinerary until December 9th. Okay. But I think the Tuscany one needs investigation. I agree. I, yeah, that one that one caught my attention. I'd like to see what the what the details are. But then after you talked about your experience staying in a barn in Tuscany, um, oh well, I have no idea. Well, that was. It's going to come down to where we're staying. Yeah. Well, Tuscany is a large region, so right. hopefully it's visiting several different regions. It's not staying in one spot. And right, but you know, are, 
will there be hay and livestock <laughs> involved in my sleeping arrangements? It's in December. Don't you want to be like the baby Jesus? No. No. <laughs> no. If it's I don't want season. that kind of pressure. I don't think the trip is in December. I think information is coming out. And seeing the baby Jesus is a lot of pressure. I don't think I want that. All right. So I do like gifts. Oh, thank you, Kevin. Jenny Lynn. Okay, my rapid fire is that their plans have been announced for Toy Story 4, and it's going to be directed by John Lasseter, who is the chief creative officer for both Pixar and Walt Disney Animation Studios. He is the same director that directed the first two Toy Story films, and the last film that he directed was Cars 2. So this is his... That's not saying much. His return. Um, there have been no mention of the original voice actors returning for sure, but uh, everyone's expectations is that they will because they always have. Well, I mean, I think that John Lasseter is attached to it is a really, really good thing. I'm kind of concerned about this because three was supposed to be the last one. Yeah. Yes. And Andy gets his AARP deal. card. They, <laughs> <laughs> they made a big deal about that being mm-hmm. the last one. And, you know, what it's kind of feeling like to me is that they didn't have a good idea for their next film, so they figured, let's reboot well, Toy Story. Here's what I would have done. Um, I, I love all of the character Bonnie, who took over all of uh, Andy's toys whenever he left for college. I wish they would have started it over again as seeing where all those toys came from before they met up with the ones you already know. Because, I mean, it, it would have given it a different spin on the entire series, and uh, then it wouldn't have been so reliant to have Tom Hanks and Tim Allen coming back. However, Tom Hanks has also said in the past that if he's going to be remembered for one thing at the end of his career, it's going to be Toy Story more than anything else. Uh, so Did he say that with bitterness in his voice? <laughs> no, no, he talked to a volleyball. <laughs> but, uh, I mean, it's they're they're all going to come back. They have to. They would be they would be dumb not to. But at the end of the day, too, they could have taken it in a different way than extending a series that had great closure with the third and supposedly final movie in that. Right. So well, we'll see. Well, in all saying that, they haven't bombed with any of the Toy Story films yet. All three of them were really No, absolutely. Great. And uh, that Lasseter is helming it means something. But I I just, I don't know. I don't know. That's, that Cars 2 left a bad taste in my mouth. That was not a good movie. I can't even that comment. I didn't a, even see it. That should have been direct-to-video, um, in my opinion. But so we'll see. We'll see what happens with this. But it's Pixar. It's John Lasseter. You know, odds are. It'll be good. And the other thing, too, is no matter what they do in the box office, it always makes a billion dollars on mm-hmm. home release. So yeah. they're not worried about it. All right. Thank you, Jail. Kathy. Mine is the Christmas Parade taping is December 6th through the 9th. And in no surprise to anybody, the parade is now called the Disney Frozen Christmas Celebration. Oh, oh no. What? Oh, I don't <laughs> think they should change the name. What? Boy. I know. Do I don't really think do they that? should. Yeah, that's it's serious. Next week from the Dizzy Diz Unplugged Frozen podcast, <laughs> yes. we'll be talking about <laughs> from the Frozen Bob Varley Studio. <laughs> it's frozen to everything. Yeah, really. That's you, it. I, that's it. You usually go every year mm-hmm. to watch the taping. You'll be there this year. Most likely, yes. Well, two of those days you're going to be on a cruise ship, but yeah. Well, then I guess I'll be there the whatever day I'm not on the cruise ship. But it's a lot uh, um, for anybody in the past. It used to be you had to get special tickets, sign up. They don't do that anymore. Um, it's first come, first it's, served. It's your regular ticket gets you in, and if you want to just for anybody in the past, is she talking to people? Is she talking to dead for people? anybody in the past? In the past, well, okay, not who yeah. have passed? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, that used to be the big thing is, oh, they're going to release the tickets this morning, and you had to get them. Now your park ticket gets you in, and then you just go stand along the street if you want to watch it. Um, they use a lot of cast members now to do the crowd scene, and they get special tickets. Do they make them wear the, they're the ones in the Christmas sweaters? Yes, yes. They always tell you if you're wearing a Christmas sweater or you know a hat, you're more likely to be on camera. So. So guess what Kathy's wearing? Yeah, I have done that. Sweater for Christmas a hat. snuggie. Oh, oh, good idea. I didn't think of that. <laughs> oh, Lord. Well, look for the woman in the, the Christmas snuggie <laughs> on television on Christmas Day. Yes. Instead of Where's Waldo, we'll play Where's Kathy. <laughs> mm-hmm. Really? All right. Thank you, Kathy. Craig. Okay, so there are new activities on board Disney's uh, Disney Cruise Line's uh, Very Merry Christmas Time Cruises. Um, 
I, on our site, we list three of them, so I'm guessing that's all there is. But there's uh, Mickey's Tree Lighting Magic. It'll be on the atrium on the first night of each cruise. He sets it on fire. A, a child will set all the characters on fire. <laughs> and also uh, a three-deck tall tree uh, that's going to be lit. And, uh, oh, no, they'll help the children. They won't set them on fire. Uh, there will also be a Winter Wonderland Ball where uh, you can wear your holiday finest and come to the ball with your Disney friends and the princesses. There will be singing, dancing, treats, and a snowman will transform into Santa Claus. Magical snow will fall in the atrium again. Uh, and then also holiday carol, carolers, uh, Dickens-inspired characters, and caroler, carolers will sing holiday classics. Disney friends may even join in. Uh, no confirmation on that. Uh, and then other... So these are just three times in the past. I'm sorry. These are just three times you want to avoid the lobby, right. yeah. <laughs> um, because it's going to be in, uh, impossible oh, to yeah. get through it. You know, I every time I'm trying to get somewhere and they're doing something in that lot, it's like, oh god, how many decks up do I have to go mm -hmm. to get around this? I know this is going to be going on during our cruise. Yep. 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 I can bring my Christmas snuggie to the to the party <laughs> sure on the can. ship. Oh, there you go. <laughs> I just don't be surprised when I don't acknowledge that I know. You. <laughs> Um, all right, thank you, Craig. Um, before we close up, I do want to talk about this throwaway room issue. Uh, so to give people who may not be familiar with it uh, some background, um, this has this started out really being an issue with Fort Wilderness, uh, but it is now kind of carried over. We're seeing it, people complaining about it at resorts too. Um, let's say you're staying off-site, not at a Disney-owned resort yet you want to get access to certain things. You book a room for one night or a campsite for one night. And the campsites are popular because they're the cheapest ones you can get to be considered on property. And a campsite can have up to 10 names associated with it. So you get 10 magic bands. Um, you get free parking for the day of check-in and the day of check-out. So that's two days of free parking. I'm fine with that. Uh, you get extra magic hours for the day of check-in and day of check-out. Fine with that. When you attach a ticket to that one night reservation, and people don't stay in these rooms, by the way, and they'll book these campsites and they never stay in the campsites. But let's say you have a seven day ticket because, you know, at the end of the day, you're staying off site and you're there for a week. You attach a seven day ticket. Guess what? You get Fast Pass Plus for seven days, 60 days out. You get your ADRs, 180 plus 10. Perks that are supposed to be only for on-site guests, but they're giving it to you for the length of your ticket. You're giving your Fast Pass Plus for the length of your ticket. So even though you're only spending one night on Disney property, you're getting seven days of Fast Pass Plus. Now, I wasn't sure because there's been some conflicting reports that Disney had closed that loophole, but I went ahead and I booked one of these. I booked it under my nephew's name, so he has no annual passes attached or anything else. Brand new account. Booked a one, book one night at the All Star, uh, All Star Movies, I believe it was, and a five night, a five day ticket. And sure enough, we were able to book at the sixty day mark five five days worth of Fast Pass Pluses. One of the reasons this has started to become an issue for people other than the people at Fort Wilderness is that as it is, availability of the best attractions at the sixty day mark is almost impo almost impossible to get. Mm -hmm. And it's supposed to be a perk for on-site guests. And they are now basically with this loophole, which Disney knows about. And they are either unwilling or unable or haven't gotten around to closing it yet. So what's happening is you've got a lot of people, and this is not a limited practice. This is going on a lot right now. You've got a lot of people getting access at the 60-day mark to fast passes that really should be reserved for people who are truly staying on-site for those nights. So for the night that you're actually on, that you actually have booked your room, even if you don't stay in it, absolutely. Right, Day exactly. of check-in, day of check-out, you deserve Fast Pass Pluses, but that's it. Not for the length of your ticket, mm -hmm. for the length of your stay. <clears throat> the problem for people at Fort Wilderness is that these campsites are really, really limited. And it happens a lot where people want to go and stay at the campsites and can't because too many campsites have been booked with people who are not going to use them. And so my feeling is that where the campsites are concerned, if you book it and you check in and you don't show up and use it, they should charge you $250 a night. 
They should penalize the hell out of the people who are doing this and getting around that. I'm okay with the perks that you, so you are supposed to get for the night nights that you are checked into a Disney resort. I don't care whether you sleep there or not, but you've paid for your night. There are certain perks you deserve. But Fast Pass Plus needs to be limited to the nights you are on site, not for the length of stay of your ticket. This is the same thing, the same refillable mug question. This is the refillable mug question all over again. Yep. If Disney's not going to police it, I say go for it. Well, you know, my and like I said, I have an article being released tomorrow on the site about this. Um, and one of the points I make there is that the biggest complaint, one of the biggest complaints you're hearing about Fast Pass Plus is that even at 60 days, you can't get the you can't passes. get what you want. Right. Mm-hmm. And this is a, a this is something Disney has invested billions now in. I mean, they're betting the farm on My Magic Plus, and they have raving fans who are turning on them. Okay, so what if somebody books two nights but has a five day ticket and they actually stay in the room? Then for those two nights yeah. that they are on site, they are entitled so to So then those we're perks. talking about changing Disney's entire um, no, policy. We're talking about closing a loophole saying the Fast Pass Plus is only available for the nights you are booked at a Disney resort at the 60 day mark. When you're staying off site, you can get Fast Pass Plus 30 days in advance. Off site guests 30 days, on site 60. That's the current policy. But Disney's own material says it is for the nights you are checked in. Yet, they are making it available through this loophole. And Disney's aware of it. They used to add, actually, they used to, when you were doing your dining reservations, they used to promote it. Yeah. Cast members would tell you to do this. All right, let me throw a couple of <clears throat> extra pieces of information in here. One of the things that we also know is happening is that some people have found a loophole where they can even cancel their reservation. Right, I was just going to say that. At the time, that's still a full refund, mm-hmm. and those fast passes are staying attached to their ticket. And their dining. And their dining is staying attached to the oh, ticket. So now, right. even beyond the fact that they book one night and they're getting seven, now you're getting the fact that they're not staying at all. Mm-hmm. And they're getting this perk. Here's the deal. When you go in and you do this thing, you have a reservation attached to your account. Why isn't it at that point, if that reservation gets canceled, why isn't everything on your reservation canceled? Well, I just want to also make a point that when I did this test, I did not actually make any fast passes or ADRs. I just wanted to see if it was possible for me to do that. I also canceled everything. Uh, So I'm not taking a room. But that's the other issue, too, is that... um, people kind of using this for rooms. This is a lesser issue. But Disney, in recent years, yields their resort rates. Um, This is an industry-wide practice. Basically, the more full your resort is, the higher the price goes. We see it with Disney Cruise Line all the time. Disney Cruise Line yields their rates. Um, And for years, though, Disney didn't do that. Disney had published rates, and that was the price. Regardless of whether the resort was 10% full or 100% full, that was the price. So now people booking these throwaway rooms could potentially have the effect, if a lot of people are doing it, of driving the rate that everybody else pays up. We hear this all the time with Cruise Line. People booking these dates just because they want to make sure they have them and they really don't know whether or not they're going to use them. And what's happening is because there are so many people doing it, that it's driving up the price everybody else pays. Maybe that's why pays. Disney's not fixing it. That's probably one of the reasons why they're not I fixing it. I agree with Kevin that if the loophole's going to be there, then <clears throat> the guests should go for I it. I say go I mean, for I it. absolutely no, see, would, I, but, but I, I'm, not, I'm not saying that Disney shouldn't fix it. Disney right. should fix it. I'm just saying it's. I don't feel like it's the responsibility of the guest to um, monitor themselves. Take advantage of what you're given, even though the rest of us are getting screwed over. But I think that Disney should. I mean, you don't give someone a perk attached to a circumstance that they're not fulfilling. Right. But do you remember when we used to have the same conversation about the mugs? Right. If Disney thought saw it as a problem, they, they would fix it. I agree that. I, I, I do agree with that. And I think the idea that you're driving up the, dis- the rooms, <clears throat> I think they love that. I, I, I agreed. My, my point is this. I'm not saying that people need to stop doing it. I say, I'm saying that Disney needs to fix the loopholes. Right, right. And not just because of it's a quote-unquote moral issue, um, but because of the fact that you are already dealing with people who are upset with the way Fast Pass Plus is going now. 
this is just exacerbating the problem. So, you know, the expression, the old expression, how do you eat an elephant? One bite at a time. Um, there's an elephant that Disney has to eat in terms of getting past some of these issues people are having with Fast Pass Plus and the impressions people have of Fast Pass Plus. And this is one big bite they can take out of that elephant if they close that loophole. This is a Make very sure simple that it fix. Is, it's a very simple fix. El, uh, what we've heard, and again, this is anecdotal. I don't have any proof of this. I'm just saying what I've seen on the boards that people have had uh, cast members at CRO when they're making reservations suggest this practice. That needs to stop. Um, uh, one cast member told one of our one of the folks on the boards that Disney's aware of the issue and they're monitoring what people are saying on the boards, which I absolutely believe because oh, yeah. they monitor those boards like crazy. Um, Does it not seem that they maybe should have take some of that Mart land and build some more campsites if this is such a pressing issue that there are this, these hordes of people who aren't able to get a campsite? Build more. Well, that, I guess, that, I guess that's See, certainly an issue or close the loophole. I still, I'm still in I think the... I that's the easier solution. In the camp of just because it's there doesn't mean you need to do it. Um, you know, I get, I get the point that, you know, the loophole is there and Disney does need to close it. But as a child growing up, what were you taught? This to me seems like a, a way that... I'm um, with you. You know, society seems to be going like, well, hey, they're saying it's okay. But that's not how I was raised. I, again, I think you're the, looking for people to self-monitor. And I, think gonna gonna, I was just going to say you're right, going to be disappointed right. every time. But I agree, I, I agree with your point. You know, before Disney put the RFID chips in the mugs, I was one of those people that I never reused my mug. I bought a new mug every time I was at a resort, even when we were doing the seven and sevens. I know it's ridiculous, but I just I, I, I tend to be that way. But that conversation um, goes but, back to the fact that they used to say that the mugs were good for life. Right. Absolutely. And I don't want to get into the refillable mug. No, issue, I don't either. But I'm saying but, if Disney cast members are suggesting this to people, then the people who are doing it are under the assumption. Oh, I don't blame. I, I'm not blaming the people who are doing it. I'm blaming Disney. Right. For right. knowing this loophole exists. It is creating issues that shouldn't be there. And they either are unable or unwilling to close it. So but this goes before Fast Pass Plus, and this was a, they used to do this for dining reservations. Right. And the one thing it was, do you remember the Cinderella's Royal Table? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. You know, yeah. people would like sleep out overnight to be at the mm-hmm. phone at the first. Well, this thing is emerging. Home. This is emerging as the next issue in the line of five people in a room pool hopping yeah. resort mm-hmm. mugs. Right. But here's what happens is it tells you that there's a flaw in the Fast Pass Plus system. Also. Well, here's the deal. We know that it, this has been going on since day one. People are always going to find the thing that they can do to circumvent some part of the system. It just happens. This is human nature. This is what people do. They want to try to squeeze every penny out right. and get everything they can out of a vacation. And again, and there's a whole board that discusses budget board, you know, where people are right. trying to save money to get to Disney. This is a great this is a way to get more yeah, money. Yeah, but I don't see. I haven't seen this in the budget board. This no. is all being talked about. No, what I'm saying is, you parks. get more bang for your buck. You do right. if you're able to get Fast right. Pass Plus without having to pay the expense of the room. And I just want. Yeah. I just want to say one last thing too. There's also an element of I can't believe that people will go to such lengths. That's what makes me a little bit nuts. Is yeah. I would never do this. Beyond the fact that I wouldn't do it, but I feel like it's so much extra work to do yes. it and conspire and configure and do this and do that. It just, and that I don't, I don't fault people for trying to get the most out of this experience, especially with the amount of money. Even when you're staying off site, you're still paying a lot of money to be here. So I don't fault people at all for doing this. I really don't. Um, but I think it's time Disney closed the loophole mm-hmm. um, because the people staying on site. Yes, I'm sorry. If you stay on site, you deserve perks that are not given to people who stay off site. It's not elitist. It's not anything else other than if you're going to stay here, we're going to give you these perks. Right. And that's perfectly legitimate. It's a reward system. It is. And it's to entice people not to stay off site. So, and it's hurting people that are doing that. Mm -hmm. People that are staying on site, people that are spending the money to be on site, that are expecting to be able to make fast passes at the 60 day mark, but now they're competing with people who are not staying on site really for those fast passes and that i feel is unfair that's something i think disney a loophole disney needs to close but uh we need to wrap it up um our poll question for next week is going to be just that does disney need to close this loophole does that loophole need to go away that you can get fast passes at 60 days out when you're staying off site 
if you follow this throwaway room policy. And I also want to announce that uh, the winner of this week's $50 Disney gift card uh, for our poll last week is Christopher Colangelo. So Christopher will be sending you a little note. We're not friends on Facebook, so you're going to have to check your other uh, message box because it won't go into your regular message box because you didn't friend me on Facebook. So. Mm. Um, but uh, Chris has a $50 Disney gift card heading his way as soon as he answers my email. So with that, we are going to wrap it up. Coming up next, the show recorded at the Delaware Dis Meet to raise money for Give Kids the World. The topic was, what keeps you coming back to Disney? So that's going to do it for us for this week. We hope you enjoyed it. We'll be back with you again next time with another edition of the Diz Unplugged. Thanks for being with us, everyone. And remember, stay out of the damn lakes. Bye.